In this video, I'll show you how to make sure your development environment is configured to do Android development. On our doc wiki, we have an Android mobile application development page, and there's information in this document to help you get configured for Android development. So the first thing you'll wanna do is make sure you've installed the USB driver for your Android device, and on your Android device that you've enabled USB debugging. I've done that on my Android devices. I've got a Galaxy S4, my Samsung, and a Nexus 7 tablet. You go in and enable development and debugging. You'll tap multiple times on the build number until USB debugging is turned on, and then you can check to enable that. And we've got links to information about how to do all of those setup. The next thing is to make sure that the ID is set up for Android development. And we'll go down and we'll look at installing the Android development tools. That's another DocWiki article. You'll need to make sure that you have a, a JDK, an Android SDK, and NDK. I already had the JDK installed on my machine, and as part of the XZ8 install, I installed the SDK and NDK. Uh, this document gives you a little more information about where uh, the default locations are for the installer, uh, where it puts the SDK, it puts it in public documents, Market Arrow Studio 16.0 platform SDKs, uh, Android SDK Windows, and we install the Android SDK 5.1 or API 21. And for the NDK, it puts it in platform SDKs, Android NDK R9C. We install parts of the SDK and NDK, but there's a few additional elements that are required that are not installed during the installation that relate to specific tools that are needed to package up your Android application for shipping off to the devices. And so there's different ways that you can acquire those elements of the SDK. The first time you try to deploy an Android app, Red Studio will prompt you to install the required elements of the SDK. The second option is to use the new Get It technology, which will go out and grab the Android SDK packages that are required and install them for you. You'll find Get It under Tools, Get It. And you'll see there's different installs for the Turbo Pack, for the Boost libraries for C++, and the Android NDK and SDK. But I'm going to follow the first step, which is to create a multi-device application and try to do a build of the Android app, and it will then install the Android SDK element. So let's take a look at the current configuration for Android SDKs in our IDE. We go Tools, Options, SDK Manager, and we've got our Android SDK, and we've got a few missing tools, which include ZipAlign, the ADB, and so on. The easiest way to have those additional tools installed is to say File, New, Multi-Device Application, either Delphi or C++. We'll just choose the blank application. We'll go over to the Project Manager and we'll select the Android SDK and we'll do a project build. It'll pop up a message that says Android SDKs are required. Do you want to download and install Android SDK tools automatically? I'll click yes. It'll bring up the license agreement for the tools. And now it will go and grab the additional pieces that are required for my Android SDK. So integrated into the ID is the ability to update the default Android SDK tools. And then the compiling continues and we successfully built our Android test example. So the configuration is good. Then if we go under the Android target in the project manager and hit refresh, then we'll see that we've got our Android devices showing up because the ADB tool has been installed. So as the doc wiki said, that's the simplest way to make sure you have the latest tools required. So my ID is now set up for Android development. If we go back to tools options, bring up the SDK manager, we'll see that there's no exclamation points for our Android SDK properties for both the SDK, the NDK, and our Java settings. The second way is to use select tools, use the new get it, and then click Android SDK and it'll install all of the pieces and parts that you need. You can also use this second choice if you did not install the Android SDK as part of the original install. So let's go back to the IDE and look at our installation. So let's assume that I didn't originally install the Android SDK. So what I can do is go under Tools, Get It, and in the Get It system, we have Android SDK uh, 24.0.2. So we'll choose to install the Android SDK. Uh, it gives me uh, some licenses I need to agree to. 
and then I can go and wait while it downloads through the Get It system the Android SDK and NDK that I need. While that's happening, I also want to point out that the other way, the other way that you can update your Android SDK to make sure you have the right tools is go to Embarcadero XZ8, Android SDKs, and bring up the Android tools. And from there, you can choose to install packages and parts of the SDK and DK that you need for your target Android version of the operating system. Get is very nice. It, it not only downloads the files that you need, but it will install them and it'll set up the IDE for Android development. And then after downloading, it's now installing the SDK. And then it's completed. The SDK and NDK are installed using Get It. So notice there's also an uninstall. The Get It system knows you've installed the SDK and NDK. Now under Tools, Options, SDK Manager, we have our Android SDK 24.0.2 and all the tools are there. So we can say new, multi-device application, C++ Builder or Delphi. Just choose the blank application. We just want to make sure that our Android system is working. Go into target platform, enable the Android uh, SDK that we just installed. We can see my two devices, my Samsung Galaxy S4 and my Nexus 7 tablet. So we can enable one of those and then go under uh, the master view, for example, and say for this uh, phone, an Android 4-inch phone form factor, or if we target the Nexus 7, uh, choose an Android 7-inch tablet look. So we'll put a, a button down on the user interface of our Android app. Uh, let's switch back to the Android phone. I've got my Galaxy S4, so we'll change this uh, text property, click me. Switch back. I've got this viewer for my uh, Android devices, and let's just click uh, Run. And so it'll do a compile and a link, and then it'll deploy over to the target device. In my case, my Samsung Galaxy S4. So now it's installed the project. Here's the splash screen coming up for Android, and here's my application. And I can hit the button, and it fires the event handler. And I've got my first app running on Android. And that shows me that my Android configuration is ready and set in the IDE for Android development. Now that we've got our configuration set and we've been creating the user interface for our different Android form factors, there's a new feature that's in XZ8 called the multi-device preview. It's over here in the fourth tab in this project manager window. You can click on it and it'll show you the different looks of the applications that I built. In this case, I created the views for uh, Android 4-inch phone and Android 7-inch tablet. If I created some other views, for example, uh, Windows desktop or iPhone 4.7-inch, we'd see those previews as uh, choose the different views over in the IDE form designer. And that just shows us that we have our Android configuration set up in the IDE and we're ready to do our Android development for different devices, different form factors using Rad Studio XE8.